glory, Father, take glory, Son, take glory, Holy Ghost, now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Take glory, Father, take glory, take glory, take glory, Son, take glory, Holy Ghost, now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Take glory, Father, take glory, Son, take glory, Holy Ghost, now and forevermore.
Hey, Pami, go, Ruko, Baba, oh, Hey, oh, 
Because you have said in your word, only the voice of rejoicing, the voice of salvation, the voice of the bride of the groom, the voice that are making melody in this assembly. Lord, the hour has come. Jehovah, this is our ninth month. Jehovah, in our your greater glory. Lord, come and fight every invisible battle. Jehovah, the hour has come. Let your judgment come upon whatever is fighting our horizon. Whatever is fighting our conception, our settling down maritally, our employment, our excellence, our peace and our joy. Jehovah, by the power of the altar, do the miraculous tonight. Let tonight be our night. The power in your word, the power in your blood, the power in your flesh, the power of prophecy. Jehovah, through the servant, through your servant. Jehovah, bring us out of every dungeon. Bring us out of every stagnation, of every bit of mighty. Jehovah, do the power in your blood. Let him come to toiling. Let him come to laboring. Let him come to barrenness. Jehovah, empower us to begin to bring forth fruit. Empower to be productive. Empower us, Lord Almighty. Do that which you Lord can do. Hey, Jesus, name who I pray. Father, we'll thank you because you're faithful. Lord, because of your faithfulness, Jehovah will remain grateful. You are faithful, Lord. That's why we are grateful. Do that which alone can do. We have come to learn at your feet. Let your word come to us individually. Jehovah, let the power in your blood make us a touch not. Jehovah, let the power on this altar, altar what you have stopping our motion. In the name of Jesus, advance testimony family advance marriages advance children advance every parent every brother every sister move us from where we are to where we ought to be because you are our lord in jesus name i prayed i want us to clap our hands and welcome the youth choir for the administration keep clapping for them don't sit down yet keep clapping for them until they ascend the altar keep clapping for them keep clapping for them until they ascend the altar. Tonight is your night. Until they ascend the altar. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. You may please be seated. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The voice of love is calling out to you. Whispering gently into your heart. Reminding you, I am here for you. I love you just as you are. Everything you need, want, desire is right here. Love is here. Caring for you. Listening to you. Tell love where you hurt. Tell love why you hurt. And he will heal you. Praise the Lord. We the youth choir were here to minister a song titled SS Love. And I pray as you listen, you stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Your love is kind. 
your love is patient you fill my heart with so much peace and joy Oh, 
Let me live where you are standing and walk up to at least seven people and welcome them to God's presence. At least seven people. preparing for their convention that is fast approaching. A prayer for you is that the convention will go well in the name of Jesus Christ. It will be the best of its kind in the name of Jesus Christ. And through this convention, many women will come to know Jesus and be established and promises of God's word will find full expression in your lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will use this convention to restore homes, marriages, lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and say, Jesus, thank you for loving me too much. Jesus, thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me too much, too much, too much. Alagbara, you are the mighty God. He that told me to do, you are the glorious God. Alagbara, Alagbara, you are the mighty God. He that told me to. You are the glorious God. Hey, hey, hey. Alabara, you are the mighty God. And ye la to be you. You are the glorious God. Alabara, Alabara, you are the mighty God. And ye la to be you. You are the glorious God. 
Alabara. Alabara. You are the mighty God. Come on, everybody. Mighty God, mighty God. Hey, you are the glorious God. One more time. Alabara. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Hey, you are the glorious God. Lift up your hands and say, Father, send me your word tonight. Lord, send me your word tonight. I don't want to go the same way I came. Lord, send your word to me. I want to hear from you. A word of life, a word of guidance, a word of direction. Lira kia la bara no tenja ga na kope lega debe no kosi ta ya ga ga. Ya kope lega debe no kosi ta ya ga ga. Ola tola je lebre nege de bora dia ga ga ya manategos. Lia da jagara mana kopra ne kolo borodo kosete leja. Lia gaga mana te bakarati ala balaratos kele loja. Liki runi ya supra no prala guna tege le greno koshala. Laya badara na kole jelere mo kosa para badana ke. Lia kasara te lo jagara ni kopra na kote paras. Libra diagonati gozela ya baradino koja garas. You are welcome in this place. Almighty God, you are welcome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of our praise. To you. Yeah. 
Worship the Lord, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Lord will never meet anyone in the flesh. Is your spirit searching for Him? Are you connecting? To worship you, I live. Worship the Lord, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. While we are standing, I want us to open our Bible to the book of John, chapter 20, verse 21 to 22. John, chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Thank you, choir. John 20.
Are you there? Verse 21 and 22. John chapter 20. Shall we read together? I want to go. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so sent I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I pray this day the Spirit of God comes upon your life, transform your life, make you into that fashion that God intended for you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. amen. Take your seat like a king and like a queen that God has made you to be. Can somebody shout, I am a king? Can somebody shout, I am blessed? Can somebody scream, I am anointed? Hallelujah. Be it unto you according to your faith and according to your confession. And as you have said in his ears, so it shall be unto you in Jesus' precious name. Whatever you call yourself in God's presence, beloved, so be it. Because it is a spiritual environment. And God said, say unto them as they, as truly as I live, as they have said in my ears, the same I will do. May not be immediately, but I tell you, a day after the other, as you keep saying what is good and what God has said about you, you become such in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not a failure, you are a success. Amen. Testimonies are pouring into your life. Amen. Helpers are locating you on every side. Amen. Everything you have ever lost is restored to you again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you are in your month of total recovery. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. whatever powers that have been crying against you, they are permanently silenced. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Somebody shout, I have a testimony. Watch me share my testimony. Tell the person sitting very close to you, watch me share my testimony. In no distant time, I'm sharing my testimonies. I am telling you, I'm sure what, I've, what I'm talking about. Amen. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, the power behind the holy altars, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Remember, we're talking about mobile altars. Talking about the altars of power in the month of September. And we have received testimonies upon testimonies. You had testimonies on Sunday upon testimonies. And more testimonies are still coming in. Because when your altar is activated truly, testimonies become natural with you. When your prayer altar becomes activated truly. Testimonies become a natural order in your life. The Lord said in the book of Psalm 68 verse 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits. Your benefits as it were should be coming on a daily basis. Let it go beyond that I sleep, I wake up and I stretch myself. Hallelujah. Unbeliever testify of that. Because the Bible says he sent his rain both upon the just and the unjust. So everyone created by God, including goats and animals and birds in the bush, they enjoy and experience that. But when it comes to children of God, you should go extra mile. God created you specially. He fashioned your life specially. And everything about you should be special. No wonder David said in the book of Psalm 71, verse number 7, I am as a wonder unto many. The Lord God alone is my refuge. My life child is a wonder. I am created for signs and wonders. My life should forever command attention and attraction. I am an envy of my generation. That is what David, David is trying to tell us. I, Bukola David, I am as a wonder unto many. The meaning of that is that there are things that others will be punished for, I will escape it. There are things that others will pay for, I will get it for free. There are things that there are places others can stand, I will stand there because I am as a wonder unto many. The Almighty God is my strong refuge. Now for you to enjoy, to enter into that kind of spiritual pedestal, you must understand the operations of the Spirit in your life. The Holy Ghost is the power behind the holy altars. If God has called you and I to be altars of power, mobile altars for God, then you cannot downplay the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. Where, why is the cause, what is the cause for the struggle, the frustrations, the confusion, you know, the mistakes, the errors that many cannot even recover from in the body of Christ? It's simply because 
Many times we've gone on a journey on our own without putting him first. But forgetting that he said to us in his word, according to Proverbs chapter number 3, acknowledge him in all thy ways, verse 5 to 6, and he will direct your path. Be sure if God leads, you can't miss your destination. Be sure if God is the one leading, nobody can disconnect you from him. Nobody can pluck you out of his hand. And of all that the Father has given unto me, this is the will of the Father that in the last day that I should raise them. So no one can pluck us out of his hand. Just make sure that you remain in his hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. So tonight, I want to continue from where I stopped in the first, in the last, uh, from the last Sunday ministration, three services, looking into this great in, uh, subject, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's so important. No matter your level in the body of Christ, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is a must. You must understand it and you must relate with him. While everybody is looking for miracles, seeking for miracles, which is natural and common to a natural man, God also is seeking for something in us and from us. The Almighty God also has a need. And what is that need? God is also seeking for fellowship. Praise God. You are seeking for signs and wonders. God is seeking for, for fellowship. The truth of the matter is that if you can align yourself with his will, make yourself available in fellowship with God, then his power finds full expression through you. God is looking for people that he can trust enough to demonstrate his power through. Are you hearing me? Praise God. So God wants to walk in you. He wants to walk through you. He wants to walk by you. Hallelujah. We are his battle us. He has to hold us in his hands for us to do wonders. I pray this day that the revelation of this word coming your way tonight, we have express access into your heart and a place to sit and dwell and grow in the name of Jesus Christ. The difference between those who are actually making impact and those who are not. There are hearers and there are doers. There are hearers and there are doers. Because until you become a doer of his word, beloved, you cannot record the impact that you probably desire. Hallelujah. So go beyond just hearing. It's time for you to begin to do the word of the Lord. He said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. He said the secret things belong to God. And those things that were revealed belong unto us and our children. That we may do one thing, that we may what? Do the word of the Lord. That is for, that was for, for us to be able to do the word of the Lord. That is why God will reveal his secret. Once again, he's about to unfold his secret because day on today is short knowledge. Now tonight, he reveals his secret. And he's here again to reveal to you what is expected of you to do. I hope you are going to hit to the prophecy of Micah. Micah chapter 6 verse number 8. He said, oh man, the almighty God has revealed unto you, he has shown unto you what is expected of you to do. I hope you'll be able to humble yourself and be just enough to just embrace this truth and walk in it. It's not that God is not speaking. We simply have people that are different to God's instruction. We simply have a lot of people in the body of Christ that just want to go their own way. I pray that God will find you and I as a child to lead in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. It's not difficult for God to turn your situation around. It's just that it's difficult for the heart of men to yield to the counsel and the dictates of God. That is just the problem. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. It is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will breathe upon you and be able to take over your life and be able to turn you in the direction that it suits in so that you can get to a destination of peace in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. amen. All right. We started by just let me quickly do a quick, uh, a quick recap. I said, who is the Holy Spirit? And we all know that. Number two, I said, where did he come from? Number three, who baptizes with the Holy Spirit? We're able to differentiate and establish that from Scripture in the three services. Then I also went forward further by saying, then why did God give us the Holy Spirit? So you must understand the Holy Spirit's importance in your life, the purpose of the Holy Spirit. You can imagine how important it is that Jesus has to warn the disciples. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Until what? Until you are in due. It's, on, it's in this generation we see that nobody will just come to the body of Christ for three, four, five years. You are not only go speed and you are not bothered. You don't know that Jesus is a risk. Praise God. You run your life at a risk. Hallelujah. Why? Because if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, it's none of his. Romans 8, 11. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, it's none of his. That should bother you. That you don't have the Holy Ghost inside of you. Everybody cannot get the favor of the thief at the right hand of Jesus on the cross. Not everybody will get that favor. 
And as a matter of fact, I'm sure that was the last one. Is somebody hearing me? Praise God. Not everybody. So, if you understand the importance of the Holy Spirit, because the Bible says, any, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ in him, is none of his. Doesn't that bother you? Doesn't that bother you? You don't have admission letter and you keep going to class. They say, what level are you? you say, I'm 300 level. Where is your admission? They are still processing it. You are wasting school fees. Is that not correct? <laughs> A child of God should please wake up. Stop assuming you are not only ghost baptized and you are cruising, you are strolling, you are not even bothered. If rapture catches you there, do you know what is going to happen? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. <laughs> Ephesians 4 30. The Holy Ghost is your seal. Is what? Is your seal. It's your seal. God has sealed the 144,000 from 12,000 from each tribe of, tribe of Israel who probably would, who are not Holy Ghost filled. But in this our generation, in this our dispensation, Holy Ghost baptism is a must. And grip not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto when? Until the day of redemption. The day of redemption. You will call it joy rakpada. The day of redemption, that is your seal. Amen? So it's important that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you because, as a matter of fact, God said, until the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, you can't even obey the scripture. Ezekiel chapter 36, let's read from verse 25 to 27. So, when you find Christians finding it difficult to follow the precepts of God, align themselves to obey God, you understand? Something is wrong. Ezekiel 36, begin from 25. He said, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Then verse 26, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your heart, out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Verse 27, everybody read with a loud voice. And I will put my spirit within you, and now wait, wait. When I put my spirit within you, what is his function? And will cause you to walk in my statue. I will not, that is the spirit that will not cause you to do the will of God, to do the right thing. I will cause you therefore to do, to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgment and do them. When you find it difficult to obey God, to walk in the lines of in the line with the scripture, you argue with every revelation you see there because you don't want to obey it. Check the spirit that is at work in you. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Because for every child of God who has agreed and accepted the Holy Spirit and have received the Holy Spirit into their life, listen to me. You are, you are excited to do the will of God. You are excited to do the will of God. In John chapter 1 verse 12, but as many have received him, he gave them power. <laughs> to have many, but as many as received him, he gave them power. Even to them that was believe in his name. He gave them power to become the sons of God. So what makes you sons of God? What makes you sons of God? The spirit you have received. Now, let me confirm that for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. Romans 8, 14 and 15. Everybody read. For as many as are led by the spirit of God are what? Are the sons of God. Now, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry what? Abba Father. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Verse 16, verse 16, but for the Spirit is said, bear a witness with our spirit that we are what? Yeah. There must be a conviction inside of you when you are, you are filled with condemnation before, you are, you are filled with doubt. When the Holy Spirit comes inside of you truly, that doubt dies. I'm a child of God. Do you understand? I am a child of God. That's the Spirit of God destroyed doubt in you. When a person is still subjected to doubt, are you still doubting your Christianity, your stand with God? Then you need to check with what spirit do you operate? With what spirit do you operate? Can somebody shout, I have the spirit of Christ in me? Can you shout again, I have the spirit of Christ in me? Alright, having established that, we move on to the purpose, the, the reason why God gave you the spirit now for divine leading. Number two, for guidance into all truth. Number three, that we may be that we may receive power to witness for Christ. That we may receive power to witness. How many of you know that it takes the Holy Ghost to actually be bold enough to go for preaching? It takes the Holy Spirit presence in you. When you see a child of God that is still shy, intimidated, 
to go and preach the gospel. Ah, you need to really check something out. The purpose of the Holy Ghost again in your life. And you shall receive power. After that what? The Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then for what purpose? You shall become witness to me. Acts 1a. Both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the heart. So I gave you the Holy Ghost because I know that it's not just easy to stand before a fellow person, a fellow brother, or a neighbor, and trying to convince him about an invisible God. <laughs> Do you understand? A God he has, he can't see. It takes the Holy Ghost to help you convey the truth. That is why the Bible says he will reprove the word because of things. He will judge them. He will convict them because of sin. John 6, 16, verse 7 and verse number 8. He will reprove the word. He will judge the word. He will convict them because of sin. As we are talking, somebody's heart is pricked. Somebody is feeling guilty that this word is hitting me. That is the convicting power of the Holy Spirit in the word that comes out of your mouth. Hallelujah. John 16, verse number 7. Are you there? Shall we read John 16, verse number 7? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is explained for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8, everybody read. And when he is come, he will reprove the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Did you see that? When he comes, as we are talking, they can't see him. He's an invisible spirit, yet visible in his effect. Hallelujah. Invisible spirit, but visible in his effect. The Holy Ghost can't come upon your life and not know that the Holy Spirit has arrived. Am I making sense to somebody? When the Spirit comes upon your life, you will know it. You will know it. What is the sign of arrival of power? Boldness. What is the sign of arrival of power? Results. What is the sign of arrival of power? You'll be able to do impossible things. You'll be able to dare things. That is a sign of arrival of power. The Holy Ghost in summary, in embodiment, totally summarized as the power of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You cannot have the Holy Ghost inside of you and not have a better life. You cannot have the Holy Ghost inside of you and not have a result-filled life. The Holy Spirit is not a barren spirit. It's not a barren spirit. It causes people to be fruitful. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 32, verse number 15. Isaiah 32, verse 15. Until the Spirit, until the spirit be poured forth, Upon us from on high, the wilderness remain what? A fruitful field. And a fruitful field become what? A forest. That is the oppression of the spirit of God in your life. When it comes, it makes you, empowers you to be fruitful. You will bring forth results. Why? Because it's a creative spirit. It's, the spirit. it's a creative spirit. Look at what he said in Psalm 104, verse number 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. And what happened? And they are created. Can the spirit can be upon your life and you will not be you will not be you will not be sound in your mind. It's a spirit of creation. Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the heart, and the heart was without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moves. Did you see that? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the heart, and the heart was without form and void and darkness. You can see the challenge on ground, but what what, what exactly did God introduce? The spirit movement. The spirit movement. The Holy Ghost have to move. God, let us see how God make things happen. Listen to me. If you are such a person, void of the spirit, you will not be creative. You will not have inspiration. Creativity has its destiny, its mercy, its liberty, its pillar in inspiration. A man that, does, that is not inspired cannot be creative. Job 32 verse 8 confirmed that to us. That is why fellowship with the Spirit is key. Because that is the source of inspiration. You call it meditation. From meditation it generates, it translates, metamorphosizes into inspiration. Praise God. In Job 20, 32 verse 8, there is a spirit in man, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him what? Understanding. That inspiration is generated by meditation. Psalm 39, verse number 3. Psalm 39, verse number 3. That inspiration is generated by what? By meditation. By meditation. He said, but my heart was hot within me. While I was musing, what happened? The fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue. While I was meditating, fire blown. Shut the door behind you. Stay there for hours. Are you hearing me? Stay there for hours. As long as God has given you the time. Let your spirit move. You see, 
Meditation is the movement of the spirit in the mental region of man. Write it down. Meditation is the movement of the spirit in the mental region of man. Which ultimately leads to creative ideas. Which ultimately leads to creativity. Do you understand? Inspiration comes. You can imagine the spirit. There was darkness. There was void. There was shapelessness. And God saw it. He was confronted with that challenge. Just like many of us are today in our various activities and businesses. And things are like not looking nice. Just There is something you, you really want to see in your life. But it's not there. It doesn't mean that it cannot be there if only you be able to understand that you are a God on heart who has the capacity to also make impossible possible. Do you understand? All that God wants you to do be engage, engage the power of the Holy Ghost inside of you. Praise the Lord. Meditate. Look at your situation. Look at it again and again. All alone. Grown away from where there is distraction and begin to think about it. Reconstruct it mentally. Reconstruct it mentally. See where there is no customer, no business, where there is no help. Begin to see help. See it. Visualize it. Bring it into play. Then speak it forth. Hallelujah. Psalm 147 verse 15. He said, Thou sendest forth thy commandment upon the earth, and they run very swiftly. Send forth your word upon the earth. There will be speedy. He said, thou send it forth. He send it forth his commandment upon the earth and he run it very swiftly. What is his commandment? His word. What is his commandment? His word. As a man think it. As a man think it. As a man think it in his heart. What are you thinking? The movement of the spirit of God in your mental region. Your business is working. Your life is not in shambles. Your marriage is not down. It just depends on what do you see. Are you listening to me? What do you see? Not that you will see good today, tomorrow you start seeing what is bad. It has to be consistent. It has to be what? Consistent. See, I have this day. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. See, I have this day set thee above all nations. Is that not what the Bible says? See, I have this day set thee. In the presence of God, where Jeremiah stood, he was not seeing anybody. Perhaps he was in one field. He was in one field trying to pray and talk to God on behalf of the children of Israel. And God was like telling him, this problem you came to complain before. You just see that I have said you. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. Just see. For you to know that it was intimidation, it was fear that actually brought him there in the first place. Looking at the kind of people you need to confront, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. See beyond your problem. Look at what God told him. When his question and his pressure becomes too much, God noticed that fear is about taking root in the heart of this prophet. God told him, if you will not do according to what I'm going to do, I will disgrace you before the people. Verse 17 and 18. Shall we read? The same verse 17 now. Huh? Move to verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, Thou therefore gather up thy loins and arise. Guard up your law in order of strengthening your heart. Make up your mind and speak unto them all that have commanded thee. Be not dismayed at their faces. Before I what? I confound thee before them. At least I confound thee before them. He said, For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city. Now, God said, I have made you. See, that is the way the Holy Spirit helps you. He helps you to be able to visualize and bring. You do know that with the power of your mind, you can put a fence in front of you. Do you understand? You can put a fence in front of you and you can also remove the fence. Do you understand? Now, if you can visualize like that, why is it that it is the one that the devil suggests to you that you always see and confess? There is no customer there. No, 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 no. It's like the way, the way, the way things are going. I mean, it's like this business is going to collapse. Why don't you just see in another way that the way things are going, it's like I'm the only one that they are going to favor in this company. Your mind is so powerful. That is why God gave us syllabus of thought. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Syllabus of thought. Anything outside of this, don't think it. Anything outside of this, don't think it. Everybody read. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? True. What I'm telling you, if it is true, think about it. Now, whatsoever things that are honest. Look, is it a honest deal? Think about it. Number two, number three. Whatsoever things that are just. 
Is it pure? Is it holy? Is it God-like? If it is just, then start thinking about it. If it does not look like God, cut it off. Are you listening to me? You are going out and the devil brings a flash to your mind that there is going to be an accident, you are going to die, you won't return. Does that look like God? Cut it off. Are you hearing me? You are going into a business and so, so the devil is already telling you that this business is already a failure. It, does it look like God? When God's word says that whatsoever I do I shall prosper. You must learn how to counter all of these negative things in your mind. You see, the greatest battlefield that I don't think any grass should grow there is your mind. Now, whatsoever things that are pure, if it is dirty, run away from it. If it's a dirty deal, don't think it. Because Satan will bring pornography, he will bring all kinds of masturbation thoughts, he will bring all kinds of... Why will you settle and think about that? Do you know what you are doing to your mind? You are destroying the seat of power. When the mind gets corrupted, the Holy Ghost is incapacitated because they call him the Holy Spirit, not the dirty spirit. He will never abode. Is it filled with hatred? Don't think about it. If the devil is telling you, don't forgive that person. Don't worry. Don't even greet him again. Don't have it. You should know that is not lovely. Is it? Cut it off. What do I think that is lovely? What you are presenting to somebody, is it something that you also desire that somebody should give to you? Is it a lovely gift? When everybody is trying to decide, decide what do we give this person? And the devil is telling you, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it. Many times everybody is contributing, he will not contribute. So what do we give him? Amen? Praise God. Is it a lovely idea? Is it a lovely idea? No. Somebody told David in Second in First Samuel 30 when they were going to pursue the Amalekite. Do you know what happened? And they met an Egyptian on the way. They helped him. At the end of the day, the Egyptian helped them to recover all that the enemy, the Amalekite came and you know, took away from them. While they were coming, they had so much spoil. And one of the group of the army that David went with now told him that, look, we are not going to share this portion the same way with those who didn't follow us. David said, listen to me, by law, it, it may be like that before now, but now that I'm here, the same portion of those who went to war will be also the same portion of those who abide by the stuff. Because you went to war, somebody is keeping watch for us. And you think they are not fighting. What if you return and everything you left is gone? The Bible said, therefore, it became a law. It was written to the Corinthians that this day, learn to think for others. If you lovely, are you catching it? Are you catching it? That is how the Holy Spirit thinks. If you really want to know the mind of the Holy Spirit, it's in this Philippians 4 a because some of us don't know the reason why the Holy Spirit don't function as it should in our lives because of our mindset. You see, whatsoever is thing that is lovely, what you are thinking about your neighbor, about your friend, about your brother, about your husband, about your wife, is it a lovely idea? Is it not a lovely idea that we all gather as a group? Let's see how to surprise this family or this group. Well, let's, let's, let's get him a car. If your group can contribute and you have enough to do, let's get him a car. Do you understand? It's a lovely idea. Praise the Lord. Now, okay, this person is planning for a wedding in our group. What can we do to this person? Okay, we can, we can, we can, we can just give him maybe 200,000 to support him. Is it not a lovely idea? But how many Christians are thinking that way today? You can see that we shut down the Holy Spirit in our various departments and now lamenting for bread when God wants to make you a real estate owner. Now, whatsoever things that are, that, is, that are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good report, this is where I'm going exactly. Those of you who love to listen to gossip, is it good report? How do you know a good report? Whatever does not make you happy is not a good report. Whatever tears you, tears others down is not a good report. This is a very touching point. How the Holy Spirit reason. Because some people, I want, I want to know, how does God speak to his people? How does he lead his people? He's there. Guard your mind. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are what? The issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. You know, for out of it are what? The issues of life. Because whatever proceeds out of you is actually what pollutes you and destroys you and defiles you, not what you even eat, according to scriptures. Now, go back to that uh, 
go back to that Philippian and whatever thing that are what? That are pure, that are just, that whatsoever things that are good report, say good report. So, if you really want to fellowship and partner with the Holy Spirit and enjoy the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, don't sit down and receive negative report about your fellow brother in the same department, outside the same department, even outside of the same department. It makes you feel bitter. And once you are bitter about somebody, it naturally affects your attitude and your relationship with the person. You probably may be in a wonderfully working way, living together before that time. You know, you are greeting the person. The moment you hear something, you know, is it sinister they call it now? Something bad about the person? You recoil. That person has not offended you. You only had. It was information that has changed your attitude. Just information. That is why the Bible says, take heed what ye hear. Jesus Christ says, take heed to yourself what ye hear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, now, he said, this is where you concentrate your energy. If there be any virtue in what you are hearing, is there anything to learn? Is there anything good for me? If there is anything to praise, can we celebrate it? Ah, is there, can you praise somebody who offended you and he has died? Is there a thing to celebrate? Hey, thank God, though, finally there, he has died. Is there anything to praise God for there? But there is all to praise God for when we hear that our fellow brother, wow, just built a house, even though he did for us, well, for a probably a purpose that is best known to him. That somebody hid his plan and his project from you and eventually came out and told us he's finished. It doesn't make him your enemy. You know that some of us will just say, I may wish, okwa. <laughs> I may wish, is that not why you didn't share it to me, Abby? <laughs> Praise God. Listen to me. That somebody traveled, he didn't tell you. After you should be thanking God. I didn't come and ask you for some money for tickets. <laughs> and though you have gone and come back. What did you bring? <laughs> Praise God. But some of us will just take offense that somebody tried, he didn't tell you. Is that me? We saw that your balloon. You know balloon. <laughs> your aircraft will not, will not drop. No. Don't get it to that point. Is somebody hearing me? Just try and think for that brother. That is what they call emotional intelligence. Not try and think for him. That may be for a reason but not to him. Do you understand? Or a divine instruction. God can tell me not to tell you anything. I'm, I have a relationship with God. I'm responsible to him, not to you. I'm not making sense to somebody. Stop taking offense. If there be anything to praise in it. What did the Bible not say in, finali in finality? think on it. This is what you should think about. This is what you should bother yourself about. What I, have, what can, what I look at my daughter there. What can I praise this girl for? Ah, thank God for the way you led praise and worship tonight. Wonderful. Help me celebrate grace upon it. I, you see, think of what can I praise somebody for? What can I praise this woman for? What can I pray? Look, look, it's not every time your husband is wrong. It's not every time your wife is wrong. Always look at what can I praise this woman for? If you can't see anything, at least praise her for the food you are eating. For being your wife. For still saying yes, sir, to you. Praise her. What is the virtue I need to draw from a relationship? Even though it's like many times I feel, tell yourself, I refuse to be like a fool. The Holy Spirit is working in your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, how do we know who you are? When you see what you exhibit. Oh, you don't understand this one. <laughs> How do we know who you truly are? You see, don't believe a man by the words of his mouth. Just believe the man by his action. First Samuel chapter 2, verse number 3. This is the real you. That is why God judges us the same way. He said, talk no more exceeding. So exceeding. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let no arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord God is a God of knowledge. By him, actions. Are you hearing me? What is the motive behind you giving that sister a gift? Physically, people may be celebrating you. But deep down inside of you, you know that your motive is wrong. 
what is the action behind the motive behind you witnessing against that innocent brother, sister? What is the motive? Others may not know, but they may just say, mm -hmm. he's saying the truth, he's saying the truth, but deep down inside of you, you just know that you want them to nail him. Do you understand? By God, actions are ways. This is why the Holy Spirit recoil from some people, and you wonder why he works with some people, especially the people you thought they know next to nothing about spirituality. Do you understand? What attracts God into your life is your kind of heart, not your kind of head. <laughs> you may be intelligent, but lack character. What attracts the Holy Spirit into your life is your heart. Most time, it's not your intelligence. That is why the Bible said the aged are not less wise. But there is a spirit in man. But there is a spirit in man. But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty give it him what? Understanding. Your mind is a tool in his hand. And that is where the Holy Spirit used as a sitter there. As a pavilion, as a place, a field of operation. In Philemon verse 14, that is why he said, For without your mind will I do nothing. So you can see the importance of you taking good care of your heart, of your mind. But without your what? Your mind, will I what? Do nothing. So your mind is a tool in the hand of the Holy Spirit. Your mind is what? Is a tool in the heart, in the hand of the Holy Spirit. Can I quickly run this now? Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is what? It's a person. John chapter number 16 verse number 13. So that leads us to like talking about the attributes of the Holy Spirit. So that you can understand the kind of person you relate with. And when I say it's a person, I'm not talking about flesh and blood. In other words, it's just to help our minds that whatever a human being does, he does it. So you'll be able to relate that. Look, the only difference about, about the Holy Spirit and human being is that you can pass through him. It's transparent. It's invisible. You can't see him. But every other thing a man does, he does. Now look at it. Everybody read. I'll be hit. When what? I'll be hit. When what? I'll be hit. When what? English student, what exactly is the word he? Is that not pronoun? Is that not what? Now that tells you about a person. There is difference between when it. So it is not an object. It is not a force. He is a person. When you want to talk about third person uh, singular, people plural, what do they say? They say he, she. Is that not correct? Now God is saying that when he say he, so if it's a he, therefore he talks. If it's a he, therefore he moves. If he talks, no wonder the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20, 21 and you shall hear a voice from behind you which shall say unto you so every time somebody the Holy Spirit talks. He's not an idol. He's not an idol. He's not Shigidi. He's not a Fiji. Praise God. He's not an idol. He talks. If you say therefore I have the Holy Spirit inside of you I want to challenge you when last did you hear from him? When last? So, you should come alive from your kind of relationship. As, look, Christianity is a lively relationship. The Holy Spirit talks. Number two, the Spirit of God sees. You'll be making a great mistake to think that because it's an invisible spirit, it does not see what you are doing in the closet. Ha! Ah, Psalm 94, verse number 7. He that formed the eyes shall he not see. Is this 94? Okay. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall God, shall the God of Jacob regard it. Verse 8, is it verse 8 now? Read verse 8. Good. He that planted the ear, shall he not hear, and he that formed the eye, shall he not see? Say he, say he. He that, he that, he that. When he, the spirit of, he that formed the eyes, he that planted the ear, shall he not hear? Shall he not see? When trouble blows, 
Jehovah see. Only idols don't see. The God that we serve sees. According to Psalm 115, verse number 5 to verse number 7, he said, Their gods are high doors. It does not see. Even though he has hand, he cannot move it. Even though he has eyes, he cannot see. He has ears, he cannot hear. But our own God, he said, Their idols are what? Sorry, go to verse 4. He said, Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hand. Then verse number 5, they have mouth, but they speak not. Have eyes have they, but they see not. Not our own Holy Spirit. Come on, shout. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of me sees. That is the reason, that is the reason why he can see through my eyes into the future. You see, somebody can sit down and see. Young woman, come here. And as the man of God is ministering, he's seeing something that others can see. Sometimes you lay yourself down and sleep. The Holy Spirit begins to reveal things to come. Job chapter 33. Job 33, verse number 14, beginning to verse 17. Shall we read? He said, For God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceived it not. Verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep followed upon men, in slumbering upon the bed, verse 16, then he opened his ears of the ears of men and sealed their instruction. Praise the Lord. So that what? He can withdraw man from his purpose. He can humble man. Praise God. The Spirit of God sees. The Spirit of God hears. So, how do you apply that to your life? Lord, I do not know exactly what this lecturer is up to. I do not know exactly what lies ahead of me in this company. But I know that there is nothing hidden before you. Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 13 says, For to manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. If God says, I'm going to guide you with my eyes, what kind of eyes do you think he's talking about? Psalm 25 verse number 9. He's talking about the eyes of the spirit. The meek will I what? In judgment. And the meek will I teach in what? Then verse number is it verse 8 now? Sorry, go to, go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Start from verse 8. Alright. He said, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will I teach sinners in the way. Good. Verse number 9 now. The meek will I guide in judgment. And the meek will I teach. In what? In, will, I, will he teach? Say he. Say he. How does he teach you that John 16 verse 13. John 16 13. He has a showing ministry. Say a showing ministry. Say a showing ministry. I'll be it when he the spirit of truth. Say spirit of truth. Say spirit of truth. Say spirit of truth. Not spirit of lies. Not spirit of lies. Spirit of truth. Not spirit of lies. Spirit of truth. Even if you are lying to yourself, you will be convinced. He will be convincing you. <laughs> oh boy, it's lie. Oh. What you are just saying is lie. Oh. He will never support you to say what is wrong. I'm to say what is wrong with you. To say what is wrong alongside with you. We call him spiritual police. The conscience that will never have respect for the carrier. Are you hearing me? It's a holy conscience. Now, he said, how be he when he, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear. Say whatsoever he shall hear. Wait a minute. Hear from who? So he takes instruction from someone. The Holy Spirit does not speak of himself. But whatever he shall hear. That is the reason why nobody has right to disobey him. You know I told you about four abominations of the Holy Spirit on Sunday. I gave you two. If time permits, I'll give you two more. Now, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Now, the last one, everybody read. And he will show you things. Say show. show. Say show. Say show. Now, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And we watch to see what he will say. And we watch to see. Say watch to see. What he will say. Say watch to see. Say watch to see. He is talking but you are seeing things. He is talking but you are seeing things. When God speaks, he speaks in pictures. Are you catching it? How we watch those? When God speaks, that is what we call trans, visions, revelations, dreams. 
And sometimes it comes up a flash. I'm sure somebody is getting the reason how the Holy Spirit speaks to him. I'm not even, I've not even reached there. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And I will want to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. One of the ways he speaks is that he shows things. He speaks by revelation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who told you that the Holy Spirit has not been speaking to you? You are the one who has not been understanding him. The Spirit of God talks to all of his children. Ah, do you have a father in the house who will not talk to his child and you are grown up like this? Say about your father. Do you talk? Say, not, we have not been talking. Since when? Since I gave birth. He gave birth to me. And you are in this house and you think he's your father. Yeah, he's my father. But he doesn't talk to me. It's not true. It is either you have not been listening or you don't even understand the language your father speaks. Maybe your father is the type who speaks vernacular always. And you fail to understand the vernacular or you are not there. And one key way to actually learn the language of the spirit is by fellowship. Stay at home. <laughs> if you stay at home and fellowship with your father, you will understand. You familiarize yourself with the language. I don't, am I not making sense to somebody? Many of the children of God who does not understand the voice of God today is because you are far away. No fellowship with the spirit. No fellowship with the Bible. No... I, how will you be able to pick his voice? We grow by hearing. We grow by understanding the language. In case you don't know, the kingdom of God is a holy nation. It's a nation. Every nation has their own language. Hallelujah. I promise that I, won't, I don't want to take much time. Meet me on Sunday as we continue from your rise on your feet, everybody. Lift up your hands to heaven, Labarabo Kosha. Begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to pray in the spirit. Lagaramo Kosha. Tell the Holy Spirit. I'm getting to understand you better. I'm getting to understand you better. I'm getting to understand you better. I tell you, by the power of the Holy Ghost, so many things you have lost will be restored. By the power of the Holy Ghost, so many things you are confused about, you will find direction. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let up by the go shate yagada badabo kosote. Nenkele yagada badabada bada. Leru shate no kote lekete yabada bada bada koshata. De kote tetere de kete yagada bada bada ba. Nekote tetere de ke yagada ba. Jato toro do koshata yagada bada bada ba. Liton jeketo loko do ko do ko do ko do. Hete tele gede bede bede bede. Jekete laka yabada bada 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 bada. Nikoto toro do ko do ko shate. Nekete tele gede bede bede bede. Injo toro di kasa tata raba. La bara bada bada bada. By the Spirit, do you know that as you pray in the Holy Ghost, He gathers things to you? Hallelujah. <laughs> Likote kete pete 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 kayagada. Liagada is a healer, is a restorer. Is a is a healer, is a restorer. Is a blesser. La barama tote la gaya bada. Enje te kete pete 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 para bada bada bada. Do you know the more you pray in the Holy Ghost, the anointing increase in your life. Do you know the more you pray in the Holy Ghost? Huh? Do you know the more you pray your your inner ear is sharpened to hear from heaven. Ilaga ya bada gada ya bada 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 bada. Ento loro bada 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 shate lenge de bete ya gada bada 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 bada. Akata rada gada bada hanjaka ya bada bada bada. Ento loro doko 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 do. Eche ke de ke de ya gada bada 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 bada. Likoto leke de bete bete neke de eche gada 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 gada. Likolo roje ke de bete bete bete. Akata para pata para pata la para bada 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 bada. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are commanding, you are gathering to yourself. Help us, favor, increase, joy, peace, blessing. 
Lanto lodo yoko doko 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 shata ya bada bada. Liru jele ya mna makoto toro doko. Ekade ya bada 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 bara ni akate. Luru jeki ya kaka kaya bada 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 koto to. Lomba doko yoko doko bada na kata. La ya bada bada la ya bada bada. La ga ya bada bada la ya bada bada la ya bada bada. Ekade te te re gade 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 gade. Habo Allah the Holy Ghost Allah the Holy Ghost Allah the Holy Ghost spread your wing. Spread your wing. Spread your wing. Let your spirit, let your spirit come in. Leya gaga gaga, leya gaga gaga, leya gaga gaga. Shala da ya gada bada bada, landa gada bada bada bada, lamba da bada bada bada, lamba da bada bada bada. Yelabo kosha. Jesus name. Can you stretch forth your hands everybody? Stretch forth your hands everybody. Make sure nobody's amen is louder than your own. Father, on this exalted altar I stand. Thy word has gone forth so powerfully and with light. 
precious Holy Spirit, bear witness to this word your people have received. And the witness I want you to bear is this. Take away sickness from them. Yeah. That indeed, I have spoken right about your word and about your person, Holy Spirit of God. Fill this table with your presence. Yeah. Fill this table with your power. Yeah. Fill these lives with your power. Yeah. Drive out demons. Yeah. Drive out evil spirits. Yeah. Uproot every satanic planting. Let your grace fall freely upon your people. Wipe away tears from our faces. Give inspirations to as many that are under the sound of this voice. Lord, empower our mind with creative ideas. In the name of Jesus. Let this no longer be an ordinary cake or ordinary drink, my father. By your spirit, empower this table. Let it become a holy communion indeed. Healing capsule from heaven. That as we partake of it, healing is our portion. Amen. Whatever is not of God in us, disturbing us, causing discomfort, let it be flushed out. Amen. Now, in the name of Jesus, Amen. so shall it be. It is so already in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. The Egyptian you see today, you shall see them again no more. Amen. The Egyptian you see before, you see now, you shall see them again no more. Amen. What is What are those Egyptians? Sickness, disease. Lay your hands on that part of your body. That part of your body, lay your hand upon it right now, right now as I speak. Holy Ghost, Lia Giza, Ila Bagara Teja, Gagaramana Tibuna, Kezu Jaga. It is written, whose fan is in his hand? And he will thoroughly purge his floor. He will gather the weeds into his Ghana. And he will burn the tears. The tears he will burn with unquenchable fire. You are the wind of the spirit. You are the wind of God. You are the one who moves upon the surface of the deep that restore light, that restore shape into shapelessness. You are the one who feel the emptiness in the beginning of the world. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, move into these lives. Fill that shop with resources. Fill that marriage with joy. Fill that body with healing. Now, in the name of Jesus, fill these minds and this heart with creative ideas. Fill their life with anointing that attracts favor. In the name of Jesus, by reason of the Holy Ghost coming upon you in this meeting, confusion is destroyed in your life. The light of God shine upon your path. The kind of joy you have never experienced in many years is restored to you now. The anointing for divine attraction rests upon you now. Holy Ghost, as we partake of this communion, let there be restoration. Let there be open doors. Let there be connections. Let there be favor. Things that have been denied us, let it begin to fall in place. In the name of Jesus, joy unspeakable is going on with you. The kind of joy, the kind of peace you have not had in many years, many months, is released into your spirit now in the name of Jesus. He said, Behold, my peace I give unto you, not as the word giveth, giveth I unto you. Therefore, let the peace of God that passeth all understanding rule and reign in your heart now in the name of Jesus Christ. The third scripture says that the Lord God Almighty shall give you peace by all means. In the name of Jesus, receive peace from heaven by all means. In the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. It is done. Hallelujah. Your hands together for Jesus. Amen and amen. Get your offerings and your tithe. Hallelujah. If you have transferred your tithe, you can please come forward. For the, for the rest of us who are here to pay our tithe, can you come forward? Tithe is 10% of that which God has blessed you with. Do not make the mistake about it. Listen to me carefully. Tithe is an appreciation that God Almighty has been kind to you. Amen? It's an appreciation to God that you have been kind. I cannot deny. Amen? I can't pretend God has not been good. Abraham gave to Melchizedek because he saw how God helped him to conquer, to recover his brother. And five nations rose against him. Ordinarily, he couldn't have been able to undo them. So, by 300, with 318 men and the help of God, he subdued five nations. Amen? 318 men is 
less than the army of one nation. Abraham confronted five nations with 318 men. By the time he saw the victory, he gave to Melchizedek all his tithes. People don't understand the depth of tithes. Tithes is not the law of Moses. I beg you in the name of God, don't make that mistake. Amen? So lift it above your head. I'm sure his message is on YouTube. Let them watch it and come and ask me questions. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the, pri for the privilege you gave you. You gave us. I will thank you for the opportunity we have to give you. Please bless this seed. Bless the tithe. Bless the giver in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Can I have communion steward, please? Can I have communion steward, please? <clears throat> Break every 
every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Praise the Lord. The power in the name of Jesus. The power in the blood of Jesus Christ has broken every spiritual chain on your life in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual chain on your life, on your destiny, on your lifting is broken in the name of Jesus. You have the very life of God on your inside. Amen. If today is your first day of fellowship with God, I want to see you raise your hand above your head. Today is your first day in Testimony Chapel International, your first Tuesday. Your first Tuesday, my brother, you're welcome. Can you rise on your feet? This is, if you are clapping for Jesus, let him hear it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to the Simone Chapel. I'm so I'm sure today's message blessed you. I'm sure today's message blessed you, your life. As you go, may the Spirit of God lead you, direct you. Spirit of truth, spirit of life will never happen over in the name of Jesus. That brother on Black Suit is waiting for you. He'll give you a moment by this assembly. <laughs> If you are clapping, let Jesus hear you clap. No man can come to church except God lead the person. As many that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Amen. On Friday, before Friday, as you go home today, go through your notes again. Examine yourself. Whether you still be in faith. Amen. Tomorrow we are meeting here by 12 noon. 12 noon to 1 p.m. tomorrow, breakthrough hour. If that's your break time in your workplace, come. If you're on your own doing business, just tell God, let me come and meet with you. Amen. On Thursday, we meet by 6 p.m. again. On Friday, we meet here for our general vigil. You can see if today is like this, Friday will be more glorious. If today is like this, I tell you, Friday, prepare your family, your husband, your wife. Tell them we are going to hear from the Lord again. Because we are entering the 10th month. And that month, I tell you, your ark will float in the name of Jesus. Your ark will not submerge in the name of Jesus. No matter what people are saying, you, you are clapping with, for women, either for your wife, for your sister, for your mommy, for your neighbor, for somebody in your department. Amen. The team for the convention is still the winning wisdom. I want to encourage each and every one of us. Each time a convention is coming up, never say, I'm not a youth, I'm not a woman, I'm not married, I'm not a man. Tell yourself, I'm coming to learn from my maker. Amen. Amen. The wisdom from above is what you need, I need that. And the winning wisdom is what makes you to stand out. If not for anything, you are to hear the word of God, the word you need to stand out. And that word will be coming to us from seasoned women of God. These are women, they went to school like you and myself, married, they have children, boys and girls. They are still with their husband. They are still perfect in spirit. They are still ready to go extra mile for the Lord. And they, made up their ta- they made up their mind to come and be a blessing to us. Purpose in your heart to come and learn. Amen. To be wiser. On our Saturday, the 6th of of next month, we are having free medical tests. You know why I jumped to that Saturday? As a believer, when they want to do medical tests, you don't say, no, I don't need to do that. Because you want to get a job, they will subject, subject you to tests that even the one you don't want. And they will tell you what they discover. Some you don't like. You keep quiet. But this time, you're coming to do it in church. Praise the Lord. It's free. Nobody will charge you. 
And the way it's going to be is like this. You'll be given a number. Nobody will take your name. Number one, number two, number three, like that. So that when they do tests, nobody will know your name. You know why I want to encourage you to do those tests? Praise the living Jesus. If you know what your body is suffering from, you can know what to tell God to do for you. Each time you hear of healing, it's because you know what is wrong with you. If you say your head is aching, you took Panadol, you're still aching. Maybe you need to drink water, you need to rest, you need to empty your bowl, and you don't know all those things. If you like, take Panadol, take the mama of it, nothing will go. Because what is the problem is still there. Praise the Lord. So you come and do the test. So you know your HIV status, know your hepatitis B, A or B status. Because you might think you have done HIV, you, you are free. But I tell you, something deadlier than the other one is what many people don't do. Because that one affects the liver. You think it's typhoid. You'll be taking drugs for typhoid almost on a daily basis. Each time they tell you it's typhoid, you are destroying something on your system. I pray that will not be our portion. So the test is free. Tell your husband, tell your wife, tell your neighbor, tell your boss in the office. Tell your colleague, come and do the test. Nobody will collect money from you. It's starting 4.30, 5.30, 5 p.m. Praise the Lord. You know why I'm trying to give us the time? When we come early, we'll do the test before the service starts. Because they'll still give us a talk that they tell us what we need to know. What we need to know. In the morning, there's health work. Little exercise, Bible says, profited little. Sorry, bodily exercise profited little. You see, this body, the little exercise you do, the little profit it has, please make sure you take that. That little, that little. In the morning, we do health work. In the evening, health talk and health check. And we'll see that again to learn more. And I pray as you come on Thursday to hear the word of God, come on Friday to learn. Women will minister, then watch a movie. Come do your health. So that when you are praying, you know what you are praying for. The woman with the issue of blood was spending her money. By the time they told her, you have the issue with your blood. She said, okay, since they have tried, nothing worked. This man, can they came to Jesus, she got her healing. Simple. But when you are not praying, praying, you don't know why you are praying for God, heal me. Of what? Of what? But when you know what they say, Lord, behold, they are threatening, threatening my life with this, with this report. I know it's the beginning, it's one more so. It helps you to enjoy this God we are serving. Amen. And Sunday is a grand finale. On that Sunday, I tell you, you don't just see the women looking beautiful. Beautiful the way they were the first time Adam saw Eve. You see them showcase what they have on their inside. That treasure on the earthen vessel. Amen. Amen. The word of God will come. After the word of God, our body will be nourished with food. So I encourage all the women here, if you have made a vow, a pledge, your commitment, please get that money across. Tonight is a unique night. Don't lie to the Holy Spirit. Don't say you don't have money. Ineneas lied. All right? Don't say you don't have that money. Bring out your own money. Add it. Your 10,000, 20,000. For those that, there is 2,000 for the drinks or water. Please bring it out. Don't tell a lie. You are filled with the spirit of truth. The almighty God will help you. So, brothers in the house, don't say you are not married. If you are single, do that test too. Because this church, we do it when we want to marry. So, if you dodge this one, we'll still do it. We'll take you to God. Not that you go and do and give us. This one, you, you, because when you do it, now it gives you rest of mind that you are free. Alright? Not that you'll be afraid. Because the day, if you want to marry, I'll take you to where you do it. I'll collect the results. So, do you get it? It's true now. If you want, to, I'll take you where they'll do it. I'll collect, I'll know what is in the content. So if you better do it so that you, your mind be free that day when I say, come, let's go. We'll not go. You know that you're okay. Praise the Lord. Whether HIV you, praise the living Jesus. I know of a sister, she had HIV. But because she was sincere, she opened up that, look at what they told her. She didn't like, at first she was like, she wanted to die. But because she opened up with prayer, and divine intervention. She has given birth to. All right? So don't think maybe, hey, they say, they say, you better know about yourself. You know how to talk to God. They that confess their sin, they're the one that prosper. They that cover it, they don't prosper. Okay, you don't know. Don't cover it to that brother. 
you say you don't want to do church wedding. You don't go and marry outside. You don't come back with your wife. <laughs> what will show HIV, hepatitis B, will show one day. Don't come and tell us so, that this is what they told you. We don't know. Do your test now. It's free. Not with money. Buy it, with, uh, buy it freely. Buy it without money. And hear the word of God without money. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Open heaven is on the first of next month, on Monday. And that open heaven is public holiday. It's public holiday. I encourage you, please don't say, I'm, I want to travel on Friday because that is holiday. May the enemy not take you away from your glory. Purpose to be in that open heaven, walking in the miraculous. If you want to soar, people are complaining, but I tell you, it's not for you. I tell you, the Lord order you to wear your blessings are in Jesus' precious name. Come with your husband, with your wife, your, everything in your house. Even if you have a dog, come with your dog. <laughs> but they will be outside. Amen. Then today is a Brother Chukuma Wanko Joseph's birthday. Let's laugh for Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are clapping for let him, let him see you clapping. Amen. Praise the Lord. Indeed, his name is Chukwu Maijem. God knows everything about him. God sent him to the Simone Chapel for a time like this. When Chukuma is walking, you'll be wondering that you, you will tell us that you, that you too, you don't know how to walk. He doesn't walk and look whether you are doing your own. He put his mind on the work he's doing. I pray, may that virtue be our portion. Uh, look at that one, it didn't come. We are two in the department. All, every time I'm the one. doesn't look at it. On Sunday, the way he even stay back, he will walk and walk and walk. At times, I tell myself, God, please help me. Even to start this type of, you know, have this type of zeal for the things of kingdom. Some of you will come. You look at the chair. They didn't clean chair. They didn't mop well. May God give you the heart to give to Chukoma. <laughs> department, not in any department. Even the one you join, you are complaining. Why are they calling me every day? I should come and do this. Chukoma walks with a clean heart. And he's, oh my God. Oh my God. I don't know what to say again. Praise the Lord. At times, I even find him God to tell him to help me to shift chair. Because the way he walks, I keep, uh -uh. if Christians should get that heart, your blessing will be uncountable. Praise the living Jesus. Please begin to walk for God. Serve. And you shall serve the Lord your God. Serving God is not eye service. So. Let it be heart service. And may God see you are saying it because you too know it's true. The way he walks. On his own. Walk more than almost everybody here. Praise the Lord. Let me welcome my pastor. <laughs> is, is Sister Chine here around? Yes. Mrs. Nwogbe, we are told tomorrow is your birthday. Okay, you wait for break hour. Alright, stretch forth your hands. Father, thank you for your sons that are here. We we'll cover you this one with the blood of Jesus. We decree that the numbers of your days you will fulfill. In blessing, the Lord God bless you. In multiplying, the Lord God multiply you. All that is in your heart as a desire, the Lord grant you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. The Almighty God, go ahead of you. Make your way straight. Every time we hear about you, all shall be good news. Nothing shall cut you short. You will live to fulfill your days. In the name of Jesus, your dream, your purpose on earth shall be fulfilled. As the church of God stretch forth your hands, blessing you, may you be blessed. Amen. You will not be found missing. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You will grow in grace in Jesus' precious name. You will not die young in the name of Jesus Christ. Every day will be a plus for you. Every day will be a day of advancement for you in Jesus' precious name. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Uh, Brother Chukuma Uwankoabi, he has said uh, some refreshment for all of us. I'm, I, I'm, you know, this, this, this young man is amazing, I'm telling you. Praise God. If I were you, I would just sow into his life. I bless him. This man. Amen? Amen. Willingly he offered to work with me and serve even in the house. And he's still working. I'm telling you, Chukuma is never tired. Sometimes you'll be begging him, go and rest. God bless you. God will keep you. <laughs> Don't worry. This church we single-handedly finance his wedding. <laughs> Chukuma doesn't have problem when it comes to wedding. All of you that have been probably thinking, where will he get money? Hey. <laughs> Praise God. And surely. <laughs> forever and ever. Somebody shout hallelujah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, please, amen, amen. You will still sing happy birthday. Hey, hold it, hold it, please. Please see. In three minutes, can you sit down so that they, it won't get rowdy? Let them quickly give you where you are. 